There has been a non-stop cancel party around me and my associates, and I am here to keep the momentum going. Hello, everybody. This is Preston Poulter here with Pocket Jacks Comics, and it has been an action-packed week. Cancel parties are these, these wonderful events that people organize from time to time. And if you're not in internet culture, particularly not on social media, like you don't even you don't even understand what they are. It's this strange artifact of like modern social media existence that you don't get anywhere else. At the other places you'll get surprise parties, right? Like people go, oh, Becky's got a birthday and uh, let's go over and you know, okay, you, you will, let's all pick out some gifts and let's put some thought into it and some coordination and let's plan on being there ahead of time and then surprise and then they'll see all the effort we put into things. Cancel parties are just like that, except instead of saying surprise, you say F you and instead of presents, you have like receipts and memes and exposing videos but it again it takes still takes a lot of effort and just like in a surprise party you know you you want to get people singing little songs or chanting and try and get the neighbors to join in try and try and get the party to be as big as possible and man I, look i'm here to tell you i feel very blessed have all this attention i all i do i'm always asking people what did i do to you to prompt this like huge passionate responses i'm getting dean admits you're gonna hear in a video that he admits that he sits there camped out in my discord not as himself monitoring everything and anything that happens he will just run off and tell people on twitter I'm like think how much energy that takes and that's just one person. There's a whole bunch of people. And they're all joining in. And, like, I'm just on YouTube. But, like, people are talking about me a lot. I mean, I went on Testify because of all the other stuff talking about me. Testify, I went on with him. And then after that, Nasser had a, oh, let's make fun of what Preston said on the Testify show. And then, oh, also on Nasser and JDA, Preston and Liam Gray did this other thing. And... Uh, I've seen, uh, I mean, of course, Vicky and Dean are doing things. Um, and I'm sure probably Testify is doing some other stuff in there as well. I feel like I'm responsible for like a good two, three, maybe a little more hours of content on YouTube a day. Uh, practically in like the past week solid. And oh, God, it's I like this video is really just a chance for me to just catch my breath. Kind of talk to you guys and go, hey, how's it going? I'm glad to see you're all so very excited on the cancel party. I love the energy. Look, we're going to keep this going as long as we can. I've got a big announcement. The book you guys are freaking out about, The Demonatrix, is going to be an official Comicsgate trademark. I'm announcing that right here on the show. And I got another big announcement. It's, it's big to me. It's not going to mean much to you. But... Uh, Dan, he's a member of my writer's circle. At least, you know, he's shown up for like four or four weeks in a row. So I guess I'll, I'll call him a member. Uh, not, you know, is it okay if I have a writer's circle? I feel like I need to ask. Otherwise, people will go, we heard you're forming a writer's circle. Like, oh, Jesus. But uh, he's very social justice minded. Like, that. that's the circle he comes from. And, you know, we were talking about the nonstop cancel party. And, you know, John's thrilled, by the way. He's like, wow. But people have asked, you know, like, is John all right? And yeah, yeah, he's doing fine. He is very excited about all the attention that the campaign is getting. He's, he's moving up the campaign to kind of coincide with all this attention. I'm going to see if I can get it going. And, you know, Danny was like, if you can make that an official comic seat book, I will back it. And you know what that means, folks? That means we are getting SJWs to buy Comics Gate brand books. If Demonatrix is normalizing anything, it's normalizing Comics Gate. You're welcome. That's my gift to you and appreciation for all this effort that you're putting in to me. I think this is our wonderful partnership and I'm really glad to be a part of it. So, uh, all right. The cancel party got started off. We had Dean's cancel Preston video, which uh, it sucked. It, it, was, it was horrible. Um, look, later, look, let me just say it, how bad it was. Dean has been EFAPing it around everywhere. I was on with Testify. Uh, I don't think he used, like, any points from it, or if so, they collapsed like a flan in a cupboard. That's how bad it was. Uh, it was, whew, 
uh, uh, some of it was certainly future crime. And in the future, Press is going to use the trademark to put out the Demon Atrix. You're welcome, Dean. That, that's a hot tip. Uh, all right, so let's let's go over the uh, the the main piece. There was some, you know, because Dean's been, you know, again as as the organizer, he put a lot of effort in everything, and so he's like, okay, on on Thursday, you know, there'll be my video, and then on Friday there'll be a review of White Lily. Apparently, not as good as Xenotype. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I'm gonna try better next time to get a book more worthy of manger uh i don't know on what universe white lily doesn't quite rate uh the xenotype but what i i appreciate you looking at my work and it's nothing but positive quite frankly that you know a bunch of my let's face it enemies sat around read my work and came back and said eh, you know look i'll take it i'll take it so thank you so we had that going and then of course after the review we get dean to come on and to go, here's my cancel pressing video. I'm going to watch it here on the stream. And then I'll stop it and, you know, I'll take questions. So um, I, I, I love the focus. I, I love the constant focus. And on Saturday, it was like, oh, Dean had collected some of Mulvey's insane political musings. And it was like, and look, the Mulvey's a misogynist. I have no idea how that's important. But people got the pearl clutch over it. And that was a lot of fun. There's a lot of pearl clutching at a cancel party. It is, it is the fundamental activity that really keeps that energy going. And then Sunday, PA's Day Resistance. Sunday, they unveiled the big one. Um, I'm just going to let them hear it for you. All right. There's been some quibbling. There, there's, what you're going to hear are specific allegations, strangely enough, that John Lamont is a pedophile. I did not see this one coming. That was a surprise. And that's what I love. This is my second cancel party. I'm always, the surprise is always a surprise. Like, wow, I did not expect that. That was, woo, that was way out of left field. You guys really extended yourselves on that one. Um, mad respect, mad respect. I would certainly never say anything like, like you guys said. I mean, that could be career ending in, in Minecraft. Yeah. All right, so. Uh, here we go. We're going to listen to them. So the images they're talking about, uh, they're going to call it child porn. These are images that have all been shared on Twitter and DeviantArt. Those platforms do not allow child porn. So all this pearl clutching and all this stuff is over images that they will admit are not only legal, but are socially acceptable enough for Twitter and DeviantArt, which I will again remind you, do not host child pornography. Makes it sound like John Lamont is a child enthusiast. Well, that's because he is. Uh, I didn't state it in my video, but the guy makes comics uh, depicting what are meant to look like uh, underage chicks doing sexual acts. I would call that pedophilic. I mean, what else would you call somebody that makes uh, fucking comics where... I, I've been dealing with some of the hot takes on Twitter and again I love all the energy the, the energy I get the discord the, the the Twitter the YouTube all this attention it can be a little overwhelming sometimes I have to take a step back and go, okay you guys are gonna stay over there for a little while but um everyone's been like uh, Vicky's been like oh defending lolly which they're also gonna say defending pedophilia they move the goalpost to defending lolly um I dunk on idiots whenever this argument comes up because it's stupid and it collapses because they can never define what lolly is and i set them up for this because patreon could not define what lolly is right this has been a big cancel crusade lately people have been decided oh lolly is bad now and so i didn't i didn't know this word existed like 90 days ago and now i'm supposed to be an expert on uh what is acceptable in in, in the lolly spectrum of things I, I wish they would have given me some notes to study for the test, but that's the nature of the surprise party. You never know. You're like, oh, wow. Okay, new topic. <laughs> Let's run the board, Alex. All right, so uh, I can, though, and this is, again, from my business standpoint, I'm like, well, it's clearly not child porn. It's being hosted. Twitter, DeviantArt, those platforms don't allow it. So we're 100% we're legal, 100% in the clear, but they're going to kind of come up with this definition, which, again, Lolly has no meaningful definition. That's why Patreon disbanded all anime when the cancel party came for 
uh, lolly images. So, because you can't define it. And one definition someone provided me is like, well, it's sexualized images of children that are drawn. I'm like, okay, so like little girl lethal then. They're like, no, that's not lolly. I'm like, hold on. Uh, first off, let me say, I like little girl lethal. I liked it so much. In fact, I took the artist, Whiskey Paint, and these two covers, a virgin and a regular, uh, they did not sell out on Kickstarter, so I got a few left. So I, I throw it up one as a 99 cent starting bid auction. So link down in the description of the eBay store while you're there. Make me your favorite seller. That way, whenever these cool products come up, you will get notified. And also behold, Palo Pentalina's cover of Guinevere the Divinity Factory 4. That is Arthur Byrne, Mecha Machise's character there in werewolf form. This is gorgeous. I am actually commissioned him to do a second cover. I'm doubling up on Paolo, so I will launch that campaign in two or three weeks when the next cover he's going to do is done. Link down in the description if you want to sign up for that, which I would absolutely encourage. But the reason I bring up Little Girl Lethal is, like, look, we have, she wears a schoolgirl outfit. So how old could that character be? Uh, 18 at the oldest. And she's very sexual. There's a nude version. Gets to see all the naughty bits. I don't know if she has sex in the comic. I'm going to guess she does. But the comic never come in, came out because comics gate, way to go. Every time I see Jimmy, I'm like, you should really put the comic out. I, I, I don't know what more I can do to get that project that glorifies and sexualizes, what, a child? Is this pedophilia? Is this lolly? No one can tell me. I think the, the the argument goes, lolly means you're evil, and that's lolly. Well, how is this not lolly? Because I don't want it to be. Why? Because it's... But a lot of times they come down to boobs. Well, she clearly has big boobs. But the other way, they got small boobs. And that's kind of how the law went in Australia. Like, I've, I've been having to research and become an expert on lolly and all that. And uh, in southern Australia, like, any depiction uh, was bad, and somebody actually got sent up for... Uh, the Simpsons images, which had been sexualized. And the, yeah. So that then goes, okay, well, how do you tell how old a pixel is and if it's of the age of consent? And that's where, again, you just come back to Patreon going, we're just banning all anime depictions. Um, so we've got this thing, which can't be defined, but if your thing happens to fall in this greater category of lolly, it means you're evil. And as we'll hear Dean say, you should be shot. Children are having sex. Like, what else would you call that person? Or at least, or at least, women that are are created young enough to look like they're underage. That and with the purpose, like, of I mean, making them. You can them... say you can say a character is whatever fucking age you want, but if they look like they're fifteen, that's an issue. Obi had said, but JDA called someone a pedo as well it's a dangerous game they are playing he's referring to us or me at least uh because john lamont is a, a pedophile uh your john is a uh, fucking gross here we have john lamont uh he knows me and well he knows i'm watching preston's discord and he says i want so much attention dean puts into and and by the way later on we're gonna like Ethan adores this. As you know, like you know, you know, Ethan has to be like, oh my god, this is so good. And yes, Ethan is enjoying it. What can I say, Ethan? You liking you liking some of the stuff I've been making lately? I see you. I see what's going on. I want to dedicate this to Dean, Vicky, and anyone else who needs a reminder that women's bodies come in all shapes and sizes. And I just want to point out that child is not um a it's shape. not one of those shape or sizes <laughs> yeah no. Uh... no there's a difference between a woman and someone that looks like um you would go to jail for fucking them i've never once argued that it's illegal um right so and a lot of people argument... are confused there's nothing illegal about being a pedophile um it's just illegal if you molest children uh Pedophilia is just being attracted to underage girls, and it's fucking sick, uh, unfortunately. Not illegal, so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never never once claimed that it was illegal, just that he's a sick fuck who should be ostracized from society. And by the way, whenever we're playing the, the pedo game, it's always, 
we're gonna talk like you're into five year olds when really let's face it, people were talking about lusting after, you know, someone in the the, the heap of heel range, like the fifteen, sixteen, you know, underage, but still way different than five. And people will play that label. If they're able to go, oh, you were checking out somebody who was 15, that's exactly the same as if you wanted somebody who was four. Those things are not the same. Typically, I try and get these clips down to two minutes and 20 seconds, but there was just so much good stuff that they were dropping. This was on Sunday on Dean's channel. That shit's fucking gross and wrong. John Lamont is a pedophile. I feel I feel like I can say that. I'm not saying that they aren't 18. I'm saying that John is attracted to... He's attracted to drawings of children. Um, he's attracted to women, women that look like uh, they're underage, um, which is, you know, pedophilic. I'm not saying. Oh, my God. Like, the, there's this legal line and they're they're dancing on it and they're just they're ripping up the turf. They're just going, how far over this line do I have to go? Do I have to go this far? How about this far? How about, fuck? You know, I'll be like, why? God, you people have no idea. Ooh. I'm not saying he's a criminal. Um, he's attracted to pedophilic shit. He's a pedophile. Being a pedophile isn't a crime. It's just uh, they should be shot. They should be shot. He's like, how far do I have to go? How about even farther? We'll add in excitement uh, to violence. Now, Nick is going to try and save a beer, but he doesn't even take it. Listen. Just uh. They should be shot. I mean, that's just uh, all in I'm going to say on that. In Minecraft. Yeah. It's, so, yeah. You know, he doesn't even come back and go, yeah, in Minecraft. Like, no, he just, he just lets it hang out there. Uh, as you can imagine, they caught a fair amount of heat over this. Uh, I'm sure they enjoyed all the attention. They got, they got some old pals. They got Smug Fraser to never in my wildest dreams. Never would I have ever expected to tell you that Smug Fraser doxed John Lamont on Kiwi Farms. I, I would, if you were to ask me a week ago, Preston, what's the probability of that would happen? I would go a million, <laughs> a million to one. There's no way that would have. Smug Fraser doxed John Lamont on Kiwi Farms. Like Jesus Christ. Thanks. Thank, I'm glad we we got to invite some more people to the cancel party, and then um. All right, so then we had, okay, so Skinny. Skinny started sticking up for me. Uh, thank you, Skinny. And it's during the cancel parties when you see people who are not dancing to the crowd, you're able to go like, that's a person I can clearly not trust because, let's face it, Vicky was the one who was defending me last cancel party, but now has adopted all the talking points of those cancel people this time around. I don't know what I did to you. I'm sorry. Where does all this bitterness come from? I'm just such a repulsive person that she vigorously defended me last time. Um, that story doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. All right, so Skinny was out defending me, and then Skinny gets doxxed by this minor little, you know, not, not unknown Kiwi farmer. Could easily be an alt. Could have been somebody. But people were going, hey, and particularly because it's like an alt, uh, you know, you're like, Gee, I mean, Vicky's there on Kiwi Farms, and, uh, well, Dean came off of Kiwi Farms. Seems like maybe they just wanted to also dock Skinny. But, uh, you know, Vicky was taking heat over the doxing of Skinny, and she's like, it's not my responsibility. I just wish to point out that is not true in a legal sense, because you have a duty because somebody creates videos, you have a duty of due care not to put out things which will cause harm to other people, as is explained to you by the YouTube term for service, incidentally. And if you put something out there which causes a chain of events by which Skinny got doxxed, okay, no crime's been committed, but if somebody acts on that because they're like, oh my god, a pedophile, or someone defending a pedo, and they go and they do something, that's on you, legally. You set that chain into motion. The fact that you don't understand this, you really need to stop on the YouTube stuff and kind of just study up on, you know, basic journalistic ethics and rules. Because you done stepped in it on this one. Uh, but anyway, she was, you know, adopting the old war campaign, EVS thing. What well, wasn't me. I don't know. And, and Ethan, Ethan came in to go, 
I see you, Vicky. I see you saying what I used to say. I see you. So uh, they had this pleasant little exchange over here on Kiwi Farms. Ethan, sporting a new icon, by the way, and I well, I didn't like the frog with the diaper. I, I like the cute little frog. Oh, here we go. He says, I hope this doesn't seem petty, but it's kind of fun to watch Vicky and Dean go through what I've gone through and still go through with the above presented style of bullshit gaslighting from retards. It's all EVS, the puppet master. Now, again, and this is where... You see Vicky's change of position, uh, well, basically showing her giving up her principles. See, used to, she would go, hey, Ethan, you said do a deep dive on Preston, and War Campaign did a deep dive on Preston, and then, oh, well, here's this juicy sex tape or whatever, and then you run with it, right? Well, you did that. You're responsible for that. Uh... You're responsible for what happens when you sick your fan army on somebody. Vicky used to say that. Now she's like, what me? <laughs> and Ethan's like, I see you, girl. I see you. So here he is. Uh, 2021 has been pretty good so far. Trash is taking itself out. Hypocrisy is on full display. You know, Ethan, I think you might be right. Uh, SJW comic pros are terrified as the job market collapses and SDCC is canceled for a second year running. SJW-ism is infecting comics and pop culture in more dramatic and ludicrous ways, which is great for comics gate business. I suppose, maybe. Uh, we'll have to see how my business does. We can stand out as the alternative more clearly. We being me, by the way. Uh, war campaign has faded to laughable irrelevance, desperately shrieking for attention. Anti comics gate, and here's where I'm like, who the fuck is anti comics? Gate? Who is that? I don't even know who he's like. I used to, I could tell you, you know, a year ago, I could. Go, oh, he means me and Vicky, and uh, I, I mean, I guess John Delarose at the time. I, you know, six scale combat. Uh, you know, that that I would have told you was anti comics gate. Now I have no idea who anti comics gate even is. Um, but, you know, it has a uh, full of the grimiest perverted creeps. Hey, remember that whole sex recording thing, Mandy Summers and the colorist and the fact that Mandy Summers later wanted to, hey, at least there wasn't a dick in my face and just talking about the constant barrage of, you know, sexual requests and stuff she is exposed to. Yes, of course, of course. Those problems are all uh, on the other side of the fence. Um, has fragmented irreparably. Okay, the, the group that doesn't really exist is been fragmented. Sounds good. Tenaple has become a full-time YouTube mega clown grifter and uh, as a Doug Orbiter channel, I salute that. Uh, which would be fine if you didn't spend two years decrying e-celebrity. I mean, dude, he puts out little three-minute pep dog videos. Uh, I, I don't think that's the same as kind of coming. I, I don't know. Uh, what we we'd first have to define where the ethics are, and let's face it, Ethan's just he's just throwing stones. It's not like he's ever going to follow any given rules or anything. Audie wised up about Liam. Yeah, sorry for anybody who's expecting a sequel to the book, which beat White Lily. Whatever. Uh, meanwhile, Nasser also seems to have wised up. His campaigns will get funded. John Delaro seems to have wised up. His campaigns will also get funded. As a writer, I want to tell you, you could, could, have, could have combined that. Uh, a few CGers have rescued themselves. Uh, I'd like to see Vicky and Dean fully awaken to the reality, but I am really enjoying their content lately. So, there you go. This was uh, Ethan over at the Kiwi Farms, and Vicky had this reply. I've had war campaign riding my ass for over two years now. I've been smeared as a doxer, a stalker, someone who threatens children as a dog fucker just to put a bit of what's thrown at me there. While I fully appreciate this sense of schadenfreude you may be feeling. Did I did I introduce you guys to that word when I, when I did that one title? But, hey, if so, I love, the, I love the fact that you're using it. I've already been through this gauntlet. Dean got tangled in wee boards and has dealt with much the same, except I don't think anyone ever called him a dog fucker. That said, thank you for watching our content, and I hope we can keep you entertained. So, look, I one of the cool things about cancel parties is they bring people together. Um, you know, like the, the the all the people on the cancel side, 
get to go, you know, remember last time when I said that thing, and yeah. <sighs> well, screw that guy, right? Yeah, and, you know, they, they get to hug it out. And uh, I, I never, season two is, I thought season two was just going to be like kind of a slow death, but uh, it is ramping up. This stuff is crazy. Uh, I, I, I have a fan response here. So what I love here, this is, you know, again, as a writer, you just see this YouTube comment and you're like, there are no carriage returns in that. That's just one big block of autistic death. And uh, <clears throat> I asked a very simple question, which was, he was like, your attitude, people are showing me your attitude. And God, this pearl clutch, people to sit around and go, Preston's a hypocrite because of this or because of that. I have fulfilled every campaign. Win of your four, make 100, already done. That's already out in the mail, right? How many campaigns is this? My eBay rating is 100%. I am nailing this. People are loving the books. The artwork is insane. And people just want to sit around and go, screw you, Preston. You didn't say the right thing at the right time upon the right topic, which... Isn't it the purity testing spiral that we were supposed to get away from? I thought this was anti-cancel. Isn't this whole thing supposed to be, we're not going to cancel people anymore? How's that working for you guys? I, I want to know. But uh, we have this, this beautiful block of spurging in response to my simple question, because he was like, now I see you don't have the right attitude, thought policing. And uh, because of that, you're just as bad as Tug and EVS and all this other one. I'm like, okay. Those people did bad things, and I criticized them for doing bad things. I didn't criticize them for having bad thoughts or even a bad attitude. But you're saying, how does my attitude equate to their actions? I asked them a fairly simple question, and I just got blah. And if you dial, I, I, I you know what? I'm going to play this one real fast. So uh, let's, let, let, let's go through Gotham Knights Spurgathon here, just so you can see all the energy that these people have for me. It, it, it's glorious. It's called I have a life and other things to do. I, even though I had went and looked and took a map early, plus I figured you probably would just ignore or just simply block me for saying anything more. So I want to come to bother back to looking to see if anything got said. I only happen to notice since I went on Kiwi Farms and spotted someone screenshot of this comment and posted it. Well, I honestly don't feel like writing a book on all this because I doubt you will truly care as to the truth. Just like we try to do with the word morality, I would say the truth, and you can always try to come back with smart ass and be like, well, that's not my truth. So why should I go into full details to tell you what you turned me away from you? As for Vicky and D, my decision about you isn't based on anything they said when they pretty much throw your own words or your own words from others. Not sure how you even act like you lie about any of you. Why I decided to try to speak these things for Skinny, who I thought was a friend for the past few years, was so that there was just being Vicky's words, but mine as well. Since I mean, even you can't say I haven't said it on your shows because the past one I have, and in so doing, I might have bought on some of your lives, like dealing with the king videos, which at first I stood up there just like Dean and Vicky had, and finding out you were not fully honest about things. So apparently I have to be completely 100% fully honest about whatever in order to avoid people outing my private life. But good to know. Good to know. All right. Um, and again, I don't even know what they're referring to that I was supposedly dishonest about. They always kind of invent things to go, well, it's okay that bad thing happened because of X over there. And it's like people can't keep two contradictory thoughts in their head. They can't go... Hitler was an evil man, but he liked to paint. Uh, they just think of evil. And uh, so if you go, oh, Preston, I felt bad for what they did to him. Did you know he lied? Oh, well, then you don't feel bad anymore because, like, it happened to a bad person, I guess. Um, I don't know. I shot this argument down with testify. No one's ever really presented it because, as with so many things, there's never an argument there to present. Until finding out we're not fully honest about things and dealing with that, as for your reasoning with the comics tree park, which yeah, at first I thought it would be cool if you did get a hold of it, but as long as you weren't going to abuse it, or... Okay. I, they were cheering the idea that I might abuse it at the time. Now they're pearl clenching over the stuff they were cheering for six, eight months ago? But as long as we're going to abuse it or be just another Ethan, honestly, I see your attitude lately mirroring him and your latest writer block and your thumbnail goes to show that, yeah, your ego as such is no better than Ethan's. So in all honesty, I don't think I owe you any real explanation. Even this one, why are you going to continue to see yourself as doing good? Which, yeah, more time I thought you were. I woke up, though, and just as I thought, Tug and all this bullshit, eventually he didn't like it. Now I have seen yours, and it bothers me. You do some level, but not enough to see when the direction you're going. FYI, I have taken even at times back away from Vicky and Dean and others, and I feel things may be becoming too much drama and such. Vicky and Dean, though, haven't made me feel bad. I had to back away forever from them like you have, so you, you deal with it. This is the only reply you will get from me. Goodbye. Okie doke. Um man I got it as a writer to have inspired that kind of just spurgish fury intensity and look think of how passionate a fan of mine he used to be 
when he's like, oh, yeah, the tug mailbox. Yes, Preston, the tug mailbox. You did that. I see you. Ooh, ooh, f- fist bump. And now, like, like it's, it's, oh, I got him on the up. Now I got him on the down. Oh, so much passion. You guys, well, I know you care, and I feel it. And I received that. So thank you so much. This is this is weird, goofy thing we have to do where you just have to keep trying to destroy me because I make good comic books. Anyway, uh, The Demonatrix will be an official Comics Gate book that will be up on Kickstarter, the preferred platform for all things Comics Gate. This has been Preston Polto of Pocket Jacks Comics. Thank you very much for your time. Take care.